All right, what is up guys? So I'm gonna talk to you about exactly how I made $5,000 my first month. Now, a lot of you know the story. It's not a lot of money whatsoever, but for my first month into a business, I still came out green, which is already, you know, it's pretty good. And I still made five grand, which is all right. And it's pretty good for my first month. Now, obviously Shopify is very scalable. You can make a lot more money with it, but to make $5,000 in your first month is not a bad start. So I'm gonna give you my complete story, exactly what I did. And a lot of people watching this are probably in the same exact position that I was when I started my first month. And this can be very, very, very helpful to you guys and kind of, maybe this can clear something up. Maybe it can, I don't know, maybe it could just do something for you. So if you do learn something, make sure you drop a like. If you're new, make sure you click subscribe. And without further ado, let's get right into my story. So 5K in my first month, what did I do? Now, it's important to know that the first two weeks were bad. They didn't work whatsoever, but the second two weeks were good. So at the time I was working as a caregiver and what I did was I was looking up ways to make money online and I came across Dan De Silva's video. And basically the idea I got was I should start a Shopify store and sell a bunch of random crap like stupid crap that nobody even cares about and the design was terrible but my goal was it would be so funny that people would come back and actually buy something so if you guys don't or if you do know the store this is why I'm broke uh, it's actually a really large website and they sell just the dumbest crap you can think of but it's a pretty decent you know it's it's well known and it's been around for a long time I was basically just copying them so I was just selling really dumb crap uh, and I was hoping that people would come back and buy uh, but little did I know that's not how Shopify works. So that didn't work out at all. Like that was complete ass. So what happened was I came across another YouTuber and he kind of explained how he should start a brand or how you should sell niche, how you should sell one product and then create like sort of like a, a nice little feeling around that. So then I changed everything and that's what I did. Uh, and then it wasn't that good. It was pretty bad. And what I did to make it better, what I did to make my website better was I looked at other people's websites that were selling the same stuff and then I changed my website and made it look professional. And then I went to like uh, another brand, a brand of the products that I was selling and I tried to copy them and make it look more professional there. I copied their colors. I took inspiration from their pictures. You know, they're about us, they're contact us, stuff like that. I basically took inspiration from everything and put it onto my website. So let's talk about influencers. What did I do? I went straight to influencers. I didn't mess with Facebook. I didn't mess with Twitter at all. I just went straight onto Instagram. And I went to the first page I could find and I advertised a product in that niche. And the product that I was selling was directly correlated to the page, so I thought I'd make money. Now I spent $80, I remember I spent $80 and I had two sales and I was sleeping during my sales. So I, wasn't, I didn't even get it all excited, but uh, I had my first two sales and I think I made 30 something dollars. So I was definitely in the negative. Then I spent another $60 and I made three sales, I think. Uh, so I was still in the negative. And at this point, I saw Rory Gannon's video where he was talking about the Lions bracelet. This video is very popular, it went viral. And I was like, all right, I have my, you know, I know what I'm gonna do. So I put the Lion bracelet on my store, even though my store had nothing to do with Lions. And I went to a Lion page and I tried selling it. And I paid $40 and I got two sales. Yeah, two sales. Uh, so I was still in the negative. Um, and then I had one last influencer, I did one last try. Uh, I paid someone else and then I didn't make any sales. So at this point it was only four and I was like, all right, this is kind of weird. Like you can make sales, but at the same time I was like, I don't know if I really want to do this. It's kind of dumb. Like I'm just wasting a bunch of money uh, and I was ready to give up. But what I did was I went to one final influencer and this time this is what I did differently. And this is what I talk about. Actually, I spoke about it in my last video, but what I did differently was I asked him, how long have you been advertising? And he said, just barely two weeks. And I thought to myself, I said, if you've been advertising for two weeks, that means that barely anybody else has been advertising with you. Um, and another thing I noticed, because I was following this page, is they were posting one ad and they were doing it almost every other day. And they kept on posting and they kept on posting, same ad, same ad, same ad. And I was like, if they're posting the same ad over and over and over again, then it's doing really well. My thought process was, he barely has done any advertising. This person is going ham with ads. What does that mean? It means that not that many people have bought off his 
off his influencer page because he's doing well and he's re-advertising almost every other day. And I think he had about 600,000 followers. So what I did was I, I kind of redesigned my store to make it look a little bit more professional. And then I made a really, really good looking ad. Uh, and the way I did that was I literally found somebody else's really, really good looking ad and I copied them. <laughs> and then I took that ad and I had him schedule a post for eight in the morning. I think I paid him $50. Um, and then I was on the way to work. And by the time I by the time I drove and I made it to work, I made sixty dollars already, uh, and it's a ten minute drive. So this is the famous story that a lot of people know. But on the way to work, I made sixty bucks, and then by the end of the day, I grossed four hundred. And like literally by the end of the day, I because I was working too, I made one hundred twenty bucks for my work. I made like six hundred bucks, and I was like, I was like, wow, that is by far the most I've ever made in a day, ever. That was nuts. That was crazy. And then I was instantly hooked. And so I would like fulfill orders at my job and I'll like write down all my things and I would write down the influencer name, I would write down the, the product that I was selling, I would write down the ad copy, I would write down literally everything, uh, the time, everything, literally the time, date, influencer and ad and all the orders that I made. And I would have pages, right? Because each, um, I actually have to go and find these, maybe I can find them right here. But I literally had a notebook and each page was dedicated to a post or an ad that I would do. And it would have the name of the influencer, the date, the time, and then all the orders that I got. And sometimes I would have to go onto two pages uh, because I got so many orders. And so what happened was the mistake that I made with that influencer is the second I started going green, the second I started making money, I would post on him like every other day. And so what I did immediately, I bought five more shout outs because I was like, this is good. Like I know I can, you know, I can get a fat discount and I could spread them out and make money. So I posted them every day or like every other day and it was the same picture. Uh, and the same ad copy and that was my problem. What I needed to do differently was I needed to change the picture and post like three times per week on that influencer because I didn't want to oversaturate him. And then every single post would be a different picture and a different ad copy that way I can test. I knew the influencer was good. So this means it's a golden opportunity to test products and add images and just stuff like that. And I could test them. And basically I would be isolating the variables so that when I test something, if I don't make money, I know it's the product or the image and not the influencer. So I'm isolating variables. That was my strategy. So then with that first influencer that was really profitable, I started testing a bunch of different products, multiple different products. Now one was doing really well, but one day I tested another and it was a completely new product, a completely new ad, and I made 700. From the same influencer, I made $700 in a day. Most of you have probably seen that video. It was one of my, I think it was my first video on this channel, how I made $700, or that, I think it was in a week, but I made $700 in a day uh, with the new product that I tested. So I was like, boom, I got a good product, I got a good picture, I got a good ad copy, and the influencer's good, I've been running a lot of ads on him, you know, he's probably tiring out by now, I should give him a break. But what I did is I found a prime, prime ad copy a prime ad, a prime winning product, golden product, everything. I found a really, really good one. I took that and then moved it to another influencer. That's why I was able to get success like that. It was quick and it was easy. I was writing everything down. Every time I tested a new product, I would write down every single little detail, the orders, the margin, everything. I would write it all down and track it. And then I would find the best possible ad. And then I would take that and move on to another influencer. I moved to a couple other influencers. They didn't do so well. They did just, I would like break even just a little bit. And then I found another influencer. Once again, he barely advertised, but this time he had like 800 or 900,000 followers. I put the winning ad set. Well, actually at first I said, no, I said, no, I'm not going to advertise because he was asking for a hundred dollars uh, for 24 hours. And I was like, no, I'm not doing it. Um, but then I came back to him and I said, Hey, I'll do it for 80. He said, okay. I posted the ad. And I think I made $1,200 or something like that, something crazy in one day with that winning ad set. So at that point, that's like the strategy. That's how I knew that the ad was good and the product was good. And I could just take that to any influencer and determine if they were a good influencer. And then obviously with that influencer, I would advertise the other winning products and then I would cycle them, you know, every two to three days. And that was really clean. Eventually what I did is I took that winning ad set, the one that really made me the most money, the golden product, which guys, that's so important. A golden product is is so, so important. I took that and I moved it onto Facebook. Now this goes back to once again, isolating variables. Now I knew 
that the ad was good. I knew that the product was good. So the only thing that could be wrong is something on Facebook's end. And that's me isolating variables. And that's something that everyone in here has to do. Basically what it does is it crosses off a bunch of things and says, this is the only process, like this is what can be wrong. It has nothing to do with the ad, it has nothing to do with the product, but this. So this is what I know how, what to focus on. And, and basically that's the strategy that I did. And I think that's why I was successful fast. Uh, because I don't think most people do that. I, I think most people go directly into Facebook with, you know, just no idea if their product is good, no idea if their picture is good, no idea if their ad set is good, no idea if anything on Facebook's end is good, and they just completely blind. But with me, I already identified a winning picture, a winning ad, a winning ad copy, and a winning product, and a, I had a good website. And then I moved to Facebook. So the only thing that could be wrong on, uh, with anything, the only reason I couldn't be making money is Facebook's end. The audience yeah, that's pretty much it. The audience or yeah, cause that was it. Cause I already had a perfect ad. So that's what you guys have to do as well. And when you find that winning ad set, you can remarket it on, on Instagram. You could take it to new influencers and then determine if they're good based on how much money you make off of them. And then you could later on take it to Facebook once you're pixel seasoned, and then you could scale with that. So that's exactly what I did. And that's my story. Uh, and it's pretty cool. And actually I let the store go. I mean, I gave away the store in my course. I completely went through the store. I talked about it. Um, some of you can find the golden product. It's still on the store. I don't know if it's still like winning as much as it was when I started, but it's pretty cool. That store is given away in my course. But anyway, I think that's a really interesting story. I think it's important to kind of understand what I did with isolating variables. I feel like nobody talks about that on YouTube whatsoever, but it's very, very, very important because it makes it easier to determine what is going wrong. Uh, so that's my story guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and obviously ever since then I've just been scaling, starting new stores, scaling those, and then, you know, doing a million other businesses, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, or if you learned something, make sure you drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, my name's Sebastian, make sure you click subscribe because we give away value and why not? And I will see you guys all in the next one. Peace out.